Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to learn how to use Angular Fire to perform a data modification in the Firestore database. We are going to be completing the implementation of our courses service and of our course dialog functionality. So in order to save some data here on the database, we are going to be using here our Angular Firestore reference as usual. So this time around, instead of using the collection method, we are going to be using here the document method. The document method is going to take as an argument the path to the document that we want to create or modify. So let's write here our path. We are going to start by accessing the courses collection and then we are going to be accessing here our course using the course identifier. And notice that we can confirm that this is indeed a correct path to a document because this path has an even number of path segments. So we have here two path segments, one before the slash and the other after the slash. So this is a typical path to a document. On the other hand, a path to a collection is expected to have an odd number of path segments. We can see here that the courses path would only have one path segment and if we would be accessing here the lessons nested collection, we would be adding here another path segment so we would end up with three path segments and so this would be again a path to a collection. In this case, we want to access a document. Now let's see what options we have available here for our document. So we can call here get and we can get here an observable that will emit a document snapshot. We can get a reference to the document using the ref property and we also have here some modification methods. We can see here that we have the delete method. So this will remove the document from the database. And we also have here the set and update methods. So the set is going to allow us to completely overwrite the document. This will put a completely new document in place of an existing document if the document did not exist. On the other hand, if the document was not yet present, then a new document would have been inserted in the database. This is useful for creating the document the first time, but in this case our course document already exists and we simply want to modify it. So for that we are going to be using here the update method, which is going to take a partial document as input. We already have that partial document here. This is going to be the changes argument that we are passing here to our save course function. The update method is then going to return us a promise like it's usual in the Firebase SDK. What we want to do is to turn that promise into an observable and for that we can use the RxJS off method. This off method can take a large variety of inputs such as for example arrays, a single value etc and turn that input into an observable. In this case the off method is going to recognize that this is a promise that we are passing it and it's going to transform that into an observable that either errors out or emits only one value and then completes. So this type of observable is very similar for example to an angular HTTP observable. We can then return this observable here in our save course method and our implementation is now finished. Let's now see this in action. We are going to switch to a larger window where we can have our application running and we can also have here our database side by side. Let's now edit the data and see if it's getting saved on the database. We are going to start by changing here the title of the course. We are going to hit save and we are going to have a look here at the database. So you can see that the value was indeed updated and we have here our new title on the database under the description property as expected. Notice that however, even though we have changed the database, our UI has not been updated. So let's also refresh our user interface whenever we modify the data. In order to notify the rest of the application that some data has been changed, we are going to be using an Angular custom event. So we are going to switch here to our course card list component where we have opened here our course dialog. We are going to subscribe here to the observable after closed that emits a value whenever the dialog gets closed. Whenever the dialog gets closed, this is a great opportunity for notifying the rest of the application that some data was modified and some data might need to be refreshed. In order to distinguish the cases when the dialog gets closed without editing any data using here the close button from the cases when we have saved here some new data to the database, 
we're going to be checking here the value returned by after close. So this value is going to be the value passed here to the dialog reference close function. We are passing in here some value in the case when the course got modified. And we are not passing here any value whenever we simply click here on the close button. We can then test for the presence of this value here in the after closed observable. Let's start by subscribing to it and we're going to receive here the value emitted by the close function. We're going to check if some value is present. If some value is present, then it means that some data was saved to the database. So we're going to need to inform the rest of the application. For that, we are going to be using here a course edited custom event. We're going to be defining here then an Angular event emitter and we're going to be annotating it with the output decorator. Now, in case that the value was emitted by the dialog, we are then going to emit here a new instance of the course edited custom event. In this case, we are not passing any value to the rest of the application. We are simply providing a notification that some data got modified. Then going here to our home component and we can open this menu that I have just opened using command shift O. Here we are going to be subscribing to this custom event. Let's then subscribe to the course edited event. Whenever a course gets edited, we are going to call a new method called real load courses. We are also going to apply the same logic here in the second tab of our home screen. Now let's implement the reload courses method. We're going to switch here to the home component and we're going to see that we are already implementing here some logic for loading all the data from the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this logic here and we're going to move it inside reload courses and we're going to call the same method here on ng on init. Let's then try this out. If we refresh here our application, we're going to see that we are still fetching here our courses, but now let's go ahead and edit here the title of the course. We are going to set the title again to serverless Angular with Firebase. Let's hit save. And as we can see, whenever we hit on the save button, the data got reloaded and we now get here the latest value from the database. And with this, we have completed the implementation of our edit course dialog. Next, and before moving on to the Firebase authentication section, we are going to talk about a couple of important Firestore features that we have not covered yet. We are going to be covering offline support for the Firebase SDK. We are also going to talk about database transactions and batched writes. This is coming right up in the next few lessons.